Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we're going to look at the total synthesis of hemgaline. This work was uploaded to Chem Archive by the Shenvi Group and details their synthesis of hemgaline and also GB22 and GB13. Hemgaline is a natural product that was first isolated in 1967 from the Galbulamima belgraviana plant, though its structure wouldn't be determined until two years later. Other alkaloids isolated from this plant show promising bioactivity, but the hemgaline class have not been studied thoroughly as they are present in low abundance in natural extracts. This has made them an attractive target for total synthesis, and several routes have already been published, taking between 19 and 32 steps to synthesize this natural product. This is quite a difficult target, as it has a complex structure consisting of six fused rings with ten stereocenters. These are all part of a sterically hindered, fully saturated cage structure, which places significant constraints on the type of transformations and reagents that can be used. So let's analyze the retrosynthesis. They could first disconnect at the tertiary amine, leading back to an azomycal addition to an enone and subsequent reduction. They could generate this enone using a Benckiser reduction of an aryl ether. Meanwhile, the pipyridine fragment could be generated from another hydrogenation, this time of an aromatic pyridine ring. Disconnecting a carbon-carbon bond between the aryl ring and the carbon bearing the tertiary hydroxyl group leads to a Friedel-Crafts type reaction, and the tetracyclic precursor to this could be synthesized using cyclopropanation and a dual nickel photoredox coupling of a commercially available pyridine building block. So let's start with the synthesis. In order to install the cyclopropane ring, necessary for the nickel coupling, they first had to generate a silalenal ether. The alpha position of the ketone was first deprotonated using triethylamine, which generates an enolate, which reacted with TMS triflate to generate the product at an 83% yield. This was then subject to a Simmons-Smith cyclopropanation. Diethyl zinc was reacted with diiodomethane, and this undergoes alkyl exchange to generate the active intermediate. A concerted addition occurs between the double bond and the zinc elated carbon and forms the cyclopropane group in a 78% yield. This was then used as a substrate for a dual photoredox nickel catalyzed coupling. In this reaction, an organic dye is first excited using blue light and this reacts with the substrate, causing the cyclopropyl group to fragment, forming a ketone and a now expanded six membered ring with a radical residing on the beta position. This then reacts with a bipyridine coordinated nickel zero complex, forming a nickel one complex upon binding to the substrate. This then undergoes an oxidative addition into the aryl bromide bond of the other coupling partner, forming a nickel three intermediate. A reductive elimination then occurs to form the carbon carbon bond, and the target product is released. The resulting nickel bromide complex is then reduced by the anion of the organic dye that was formed from the radical extraction of the initial substrate. With the coupling now complete, they could then progress to the Friedel-Crafts reaction. This reaction proved to be very challenging as it required the reaction of the meta position of the aryl ring, which is disfavoured as this position is not activated by the aryl ether. After extensive screening, they discovered that using hexafluoroisopropanol together with diethyl aluminium chloride could affect the reaction. They propose that the reaction of these two species forms an aluminium isopropoxide chloride salt, as they observed the evolution of a gas from this reaction, which they propose is ethane, generated by the deprotonation of the alcohol. This complex coordinates to the carbonyl, increasing its electrophilicity and allowing for the electrophilic aromatic substitution of the aryl ring to occur. This produced the desired target in 57% yield, and the bowl like shape of this product will be used to guide the stereochemistry for the rest of the synthesis. This can be seen in the next reaction, which was a catalytic hydrogenation using a rhodium catalyst together with aluminium oxide. This was successful in selectively hydrogenating the convex side of the pyridine ring, as the concave side is inaccessible due to steric hindrance. Notably, it was selective for the pyridine ring and did not reduce the aryl ether. The product of this reaction would be used as a common intermediate in the synthesis of hemgaline and also GB22 and GB13. Taking this intermediate forward, it was demethylated 
using boron tribromide. This first coordinates to the oxygen of the aryl ether and then reacts with another equivalent of boron tribromide. This forms a boron dibromide activated aryl ether and a nucleophilic boron tetrabromide species. It is this tetrabromide that attacks the methyl group and ultimately forms the phenol upon workup. The structure of this product was determined using X ray crystallography, which confirmed that the desired structure had been formed. With this in hand, they then carried out a reductive amination using formaldehyde. This first forms an aluminium ion, which was then reduced in a one pot sequence using sodium cyanoborohydride. This installed the desired methyl group in a 79% yield, completing the synthesis of GB22. From this same common intermediate, they could also synthesize GB13. They first carried out a Benckiesa reduction using lithium metal and methylamine in ethanol. This is a radical reduction and is similar to the more common Birch reaction. The product of this reduction could be isolated and characterized by X ray crystallography. However, they could also take it forward without isolation and react it with hydrochloric acid. This hydrolyzes the eon ether, forming the ketone and also isomerizing the double bond to form the target enone of GB13 in a 29% yield over two steps. This is quite an impressive achievement, as this product could be achieved in just six steps, whereas the shortest previous synthesis required 18. To transform this GB13 into the target hemgaline, they first carried out an azomycal addition, which was promoted by acetic acid. This was a stereospecific reaction, as the concave shape of the molecule directs the amine to attack from the top face of the enone and completes all of the bonds required for the cage structure of the molecule. The ketone produced by this reaction was not isolated and instead was directly reduced using sodium triacetoxyborohydride. This added from the bottom face to produce only the desired isomer and complete the synthesis of hemoglobin in a 53% yield over two steps. Overall, this synthesis is quite impressive as it is a very short route and many of these transformations can be carried out without isolation and hemoglobin could be produced in just seven steps, less than half the number needed than the syntheses which have previously been reported. Well, that's everything for this week. In the next video, we'll look at the total synthesis of 10 benzyloxy narciclazine.